Attack of Titan in Season 4, Episode 8. You wanted the potatoes, but not the meat. So what's up guys, Foxen here. Attack on Titan manga comparison time. Did Gabby just unite everyone online in their hatred? So blast that like and subscribe. Anyone that doesn't must be on Team Gabby. Episode 8, titled Assassin's Bullet. Same title as Chapter 105, where Sasha got popped. Kicking this off with a new challenger approaching. You got Mappa giving you a mixture of CG for Titan Eren, and to the animation for the half-baked armor Titan. The anime gave you a new quick scene for the cheerleader Gabby. For the double page spread in the manga version, Eren vs. Reiner, this got expanded into an equally quick smashdown. Notably, the anime did give Eren back his Titan Knuckles, which were missing at the end of the last anime episode. Do I smell potential Blu-ray fix? Very quickly, you got a shot of the armor titan's backside not shown in the manga. You can notice the back armor thinner and completely lacking for his legs, which is pretty similar to when Reiner ditched them back in Season 2 for speed. Lovely glance of Mikasa at the side looking. She resembles that One Punch Man purple ninja. As for Reiner claiming his Jaws Titan prize, notice you can actually see more spiking in the anime now, especially in the midsection and arms. The Jaws Titan face looks like a knocked out cartoon character. Too much damage on his coconut. For the Ackerman and Jaeger reuniting, anime Eren isn't looking too fleshy ejecting from his Titan. Looking at a face that only a Titan mother could love. For once, the anime is less steamy. You can see the armored Titan lost more than his jaw. Part of his face plating too. So, time for the retreat. You got a full page expanded in the anime scene mostly focused on Jean. Insert trailer shot not used right here. In the manga, you were actually able to spot the Beast Titan's leftover skull evaporating. Switching to Falcon, one raging girl seeing the scouts departing. The Marley guy actually did react to Gabby bolting in the manga. The anime skipped a quick line. Gabby went on about how the guard dude's gun had some bullets for the scouts. For some survey core fun, you have a new anime original quick scene of the scouts blasting some fools. Gotta protect the mothership. Anyway, time for the king to board. The anime made this much more intense. New shot of Armin staring down intensely. You could feel anime Armin taking his time gathering his thoughts, overseeing Eren. Compare this to what instantly feels like going into hell for the manga. It opened with him already crouched down. Naturally, you can't capture some panel layouts in the anime, so take a look at this. Armin on one side, with Eren on the other. Meanwhile, Mikasa smacked down in the middle of both her buddies. Then for the help up. I looked for it, but nothing. The manga version had it super out there. You could see light from Armin's side, reaching over to the shadowed Eren side. On top of this, contrast it with the SWAT clothing palette. So checking out Hobo Eren up close, I feel like he looks and sounds more lifeless now in the anime. Surprisingly, I haven't seen a single complaint for Levi this episode. I guess even Gabby overshadowed the Attack of Titan moneymaker. Next up, Levi's super kick. Really need Eren in the noggin. Levi, are you losing your touch? I don't see any pearly whites for Hanji. With Levi going in for the arrest, besides Eren's backside to a door now, notice Levi's wings of freedom. For manga readers, there was a question about whether Levi switched to a black version to match the new suits. The anime now confirms that's remained green. Then, the undead Eren look continued here. Notably, the anime emphasized this with the close-up to his eyes. They are still green, by the way. Switching to the outside, the Marley soldier scene got expanded a bit. It looks like they're actually putting effort in the anime now, compared to getting quickly picked off by the Surrey Corps. Check out Commander Lobov Go. This whole scene with him showing his moves is anime original. I guess they wanted to give him something before sending him off. And I did double check where he appeared before. Lobov briefly appeared in the Trost arc. Anyway, getting back to the two buddies in the light. I do think this was a message. We'll see if Kony joins Sasha sooner or later. Let's go. Celebration time for the new Eldian Empire. Funny how they removed the blonde chick from the one shot, despite her being there for the close-up of Flock. For Jean, you can now see how he's troubled with that dreaded look on the face. Was ultra tiny in the manga. What a picture-perfect shot of the ordinary trio. No titan powers here, unfortunately. Taking a look at the wailing devil. Cry me a river, Gabby. Kinda wish they showed more of her face. I do like how the anime positioned the far shot. Clearly, Gabby was still able to take off, but you could examine how she was coming to terms with the situation. With the Udo flashback, you actually did get a new drawn panel for his demise. You could even spot individual footprints. For an anime cut here, you had Gabby talking about getting spat on when going outside the determined zone. The manga included a flashback of those Marley people. Even the dog looked like it didn't like Gabby. The dog could smell evil. Then, for Gabby grasping her armband, you did get a panel of Gabby's past training here too. As for Gabby's little monologue, I like how the anime changed this up so Gabby's talking into the distance looking down. She's no longer facing Falco. For a great attention to detail, look at those eyebrows go. Really shows how shaken with fury Gabby was, especially with Falco trying to talk her to stop. Was it just me or did Gabby's head look odd here? Perhaps overly long? 
Either way, Mappa really killed it with these facial shots. Yes, Gabby sucks, but you can feel her pain right here. Unfortunately, getting to Gabby's first victim, the anime made it much clearer how the old dude hesitated over her being a little kid. What the hell? Did the anime just make Gabby more overpowered? Originally, we thought that Gabby got knocked back after taking the shot. But no, she actually got the shot sliding into it. Talk about hacking. The actual headshot was right in the eye. Really too quick to see the detail for the anime. Then, for Gabby putting two and two together, seeing the wire still connected. Aw, oh, no JoJo reference for the anime. I do have to get credit to anime Gabby for being more believable when figuring out the 3D maneuver gear trigger. You can smell her scheming from your screen. Even I'm backing away from Gabby voicing what she'll do to the island devils, as expected from the self-proclaimed true Eldian. So how the hell did Gabby go from killer mode to seeming thankful to her buddy? So much props to her voice actress. During the takeoff, you can't spot the poor dude leaking out. Right here, you got the familiar tale of the season 4 trailer shot of Gabby and Falco going up, not used. Switching to Sasha, the anime actually had Sasha turning around, really making it explicit that she did notice Falco and Gabby. On the other hand, now you have all this noise for the anime. Sadly, if you do rewatch this, you can start seeing spots where it could have been prevented. Flock cheering loudly is new noise for the anime. So hey, they left the little assassin with one eye closed for the anime too. So examining the damage, the anime changed the potato girl Sasha's arm on the left. Manga Sasha almost looked like she was reaching for her sidearm. And in the back, Flock got moved out of the shot. Most likely he's now further back with the crowd. For an anime attention to detail, you actually can't spot an exit wound from Sasha's behind. So come on, thick Sasha is gone. The anime now shows you a clearer version of where the bullet actually pierced her, right under the boobage. So I know there's been a lot of talk about the chest armor. Depending on how she was wearing it, it may not have shielded her. The chest plate is rather small. But still, Isayama, why? Freaking love that quick reload animation. Gabby really was going to go down fighting. For Gabby versus the pissed off Stallion, I never really liked how the shooting panel looked. Credit here goes to Falco. I know people don't like that he saved his crush, but instead notice that Jean and Gabby would have likely taken each other out if Falco didn't intervene. Some could argue it may have been worth the cost. Just saying. Go ahead and enjoy the new scene of Gabby getting a trashing. Too bad that Falco got half of that beatdown. Clearly they got a toss up in the manga too, but it happened off panel. In the anime, you could actually spot Flock right in there. And just so you could feel it in your chest, the anime gave you the gallons of blood oozing out. You could see the horror in Kony's eyes. Same deal for Potato Girl Sasha. Life is just draining away. And just to clarify, Sasha did say Niku, meaning meat. They explicitly use the character for meat, even in the official Japanese subs and manga. As a comparison to the previous trio in the manga, you have this one. Jean, the fallen, and the broken buddy. At this point, it's far too late, but you were able to spot that reoccurring blonde character in the scene trying to help out. Notice how in the anime version, both of them are sporting the chest plate. Poor Falco, poor kid, you can actually see his eyes swelling up. The things you do for love. Gabby, on the other hand, struggling like a chihuahua to the bitter end. She's just lacking the nosebleed, did they go easy on her? So how about a compromise, toss out one kid. For a quick second, you could actually spot Daz and Sammy within the scouts here. Anyone recall these two from season 1? Great for the enemy to include them early on. With the sad Sasha close-up, the enemy now left her eyes partially open as she goes to a better place. For a minor nitpick, I really do think the mid-info card should have been placed after the blimp scene. Switching to peak steaming like a chimney, there's actually less smoke in the anime version. Taking a look at the younger peak in the flashback, at this point you're familiar with the filter placed on here, but it still is actually more clear than the fuzzy manga version. You can now make out Oyakobun. Notably, the anime updated them with that vest. Back to the swarming devil. Did Gabby just get sucker punched off screen? Or did I spot a little mistake here? Hmm. Us true devils are so awesome. I do have to commend the anime how it made me want to chuck the little brat too. Falco, are you sure you like that? And one of my personal favorite shots this episode, much detailed. Notably from the trashing, Gabby's hair too is undone now, and Falco's got a busted lip. Switching over to a different unexpected trio, you got Zeke with the sausage stumps. Similar for the anime, except it pans super quickly. Aw, for the little shock brats, they're matching. I'm telling you, Falco, run. With both of them here, it does appear this is the first time that ever looks almost surprised, instead of having that vacant look. Getting into anime Nick Fury coming in. See, even Hanji has armor. Staying true to form, the anime captures War Chief Zeke with the evil glasses look. For raising Jean, even closer for the anime. I think a tad too close. 
So taking a look at Yelena, this is probably one of the best anime shots so far. Notice how the anime removed one eye closed as she spoke, which kind of sucks that was her thing. Let's see if they remove all future instances of it. For what Yelena actually said here, you should notice that Yelena now speaks formally as she apologizes, even closing both eyes. The anime did remove her line saying that she did let them get away, which definitely confused some Attack on Titan fans back then. With the Hobo Aaron close-up, he's no longer looking like a certain bleach espada. As for top 10 Attack on Titan losses, sad, sad Kony coming in. Armin and Mikasa crying in the anime takes it up a few notches. It really always gets me whenever someone like Mikasa cries out in pain. They even added the shot of tears falling on Sasha's face. Come on Mappa, you're killing me. Notably, Eren doesn't look over. The anime shot even has him fully covered. You do have to love the Sasha flashback scene. This is showing you how Attack on Titan Season 1 would have looked in Mappa's more detailed animation, at least compared to the Season 1 stuff. I wouldn't mind them remaking more Season 1 scenes. And just to stick the knife in some more, Mappa gave you a new final end shot of Sasha. Rest in potatoes, girl. For Eren's distress, that laugh or chuckle, whatever you want to call it. Besides that, there was a question about whether manga Eren was crying or almost in tears, which I've seen some fan art add in the past. Just to put that to rest, you can clearly see anime Eren now, no tears whatsoever. On the other hand, clearly Eren is extremely pissed with the loss of Sasha. Miscalculation my ass. So, how are you feeling about this episode a few days later? Are you still sad over Sasha being voted off the island? I've surprisingly seen no animation or music in place for this episode. Looks like Gabby was exactly what MAPPA needed. For the total chapters covered, from chapter 104, the last 8 pages, and all of chapter 105, around 1.2 chapters total. Overall, definitely a much slower paced episode, which was expected given the content. Only 8 episodes left for around 17 chapters worth of content. It'll be interesting what the anime speeds up that isn't action stuff. Let me touch on a popular question from a lot of you on these manga comparison videos. Why are they not using scenes from the trailer? Here's the overview. Back in June, it was revealed that the villain saga director, Yabuta, was behind this. He storyboarded and directed the Attack of Titan Season 4 trailer. When the trailer dropped, you may have recalled the term pre-animated that kept on getting tossed around. But months later, 8 episodes in, you now know that it definitely wasn't, at least not the typical usage for that term. Recall how Wit Studio animated the Irwin vs. Armin syringe toss-up as a tease? That was the case of the scene being animated in advance or pre-animated. The harsh reality is that the Attack on Season 4 trailer was made as a promotional video. They simply took various manga panels over what was going to be covered, then made anime versions of them. That's why there's so many stills and hardly any actual animation in the trailer. In other words, the trailer scenes, like the drawn Warhammer Titan, they weren't animated in advance. They weren't pre-animated for usage later in the anime. That said, if you've been keeping up with all of these manga comparison videos, you may recall a handful of stills that were kept. Honestly, I can't blame you if you feel misled by this. In hindsight, I do wish MAPPA Studio had communicated better to us. That Warhammer Titan vs. Eren scene looked great, and it gave you expectations for the fight. No one expected so much CG to be used for the Titans. Hell, the CG Titans didn't get revealed until the MAPPA event. Although, if you are a long-term watcher, you know how badly Attack on Titan has been at keeping fans informed. On the flip side, I could almost guarantee you the CG stuff wasn't at all ready back then. This whole season for production is just a rushed mess. It really speaks volumes about the likely greed of the Attack on Titan production committee, them trying to push out this final season as soon as possible. Either way, you could expect more info about the horrible state of the final season production to ooze out as time goes by. And since I know you're wondering, how common is it for anime to make this promotional trailer like this, where most of the animation you see isn't in the actual anime? I'll just say, in decades of watching anime, it feels pretty rare. One example that comes to mind is a promotional trailer for Violet Evergarden. You could just see that as Kyoto animation being extra. Although you know looking at that, and not be surprised that the animation isn't going to make it into the final anime episodes. For a different example of animation made only for the trailer, it is common for trailers to include various character-focused promos, which are usually simple or minimal animation. On the other hand, it isn't uncommon for an upcoming anime to pre-animate a money shot for the trailer, especially if they want to tease something several episodes into the anime season, episodes that may not be ready yet. But anyway, this was a quick rundown, definitely leave your thoughts on the episode below. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so YouTube tells you about new videos. Go ahead and check out my winter anime video for anime you should be watching. Check back for new anime videos coming out and I'll see you guys later.